Welcome back to my Mental Health and Crime channel. My name is Huda London. I'm a licensed cognitive behavior therapist. That's a CBT therapist and a licensed mental health counselor. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the contents in this channel. It helps me to spread awareness in an important case like this. In the beginning of this case, there was this article that I found very interesting from New York Post. It was a former university professor of Brian Christopher Koberger said that the accused killer was one of my best students ever and that the sorry and that then master's candidate was one of only two students she recommended to a PhD program. You can imagine being a professor with a PhD when you recommend someone, you usually do proper research on the per person, you observe their characters because taking the chance as a professor to recommend someone is a huge thing. Michelle Boldger, 33, was an associated professor at D. Sales University in Pennsylvania. She told the Daily Mail that Koberger, who was arrested in the murders of the four universities of Idaho students, was a great writer and a brilliant student. In my 10 years of teaching, I've only recommended two students to a PhD program, and he was one of the two. She said, he was one of my best students ever. Everyone is in shock over this, she told the outlet, adding that he was always perfectly professional with her. That is important because... There's these rumors going around that Mr. Brian Christopher Koberger was always wrongfully treating female students in his class, that he was harsh with the grades, but I saw that he was harsh with the grades with the male students too. We had this interview of the male students saying that Brian Koberger was very strict in giving grades. Towards the end of the period, in December, he was quite flexible with giving out grades. That's what the student said. He never said that Brian Koberger was partial towards male students and female students. So we have to actually be very careful of what we hear, the allegations, speculations. They're not the facts. And it's wrong when people like the professor who recently allegedly said that Brian Koberger was a difficult professor and such things. Those are rumors. Those are speculations. Once a person gets arrested, many people will have a lot to say. In fact, people who don't even know him will have something to say, like we see on YouTube itself. People who allegedly say that I'm from Pennsylvania I know his medical record. I know I've spoken to the pharmacist in the drugstore and he told me what kind of medications he used. I find that to be outrageous because we know it's just a chemist, a pharmacist is just like a counselor. Although we have different branches, they have the confidentiality rights. Just like a doctor, you can't give out somebody's medical reports. It's like me telling people that he was a, I was his therapist and this is what he spoke about and this is what he's diagnosed for. That is completely wrong because confidentiality is a really serious thing and once that's breached, a license can be revoked. So I do not believe all of that. In my 10 years of teaching, I've only recommended two students to a PhD program and he was one of them. 
He was one of my best students ever. Everyone is in shock over this, she told the outlet, adding that he was always perfectly professional with her. Let's not forget, this 33-year-old professor is a female. The association's professor at the private Catholic University in Center Valley, Pennsylvania, said she was stunned that her, this is what she looks like, she's a beautiful woman. By saying she's beautiful, what I mean is she's a female in her young 30s. So if Brian Kohlberger was different towards women, she would have noticed that. She said he was professional with her, and she's a female. Let's not forget that. So rumors can be hurtful, especially when somebody is being accused of a horrific quadruple murder. He could be innocent until he's proven guilty. So you have to be careful how we speculate about such things. Let's speculate, in fact, about what we see with our own eyes, like the grub truck video, which I'll come to soon. She carries on to say, I'm shocked as what he's been accused of. I don't believe it, but I get it. Bulger said, this news is upsetting. I haven't slept at all since hearing about Brian. Bulger told the news outlet that she taught Koberger in an online class last year and helped him with his master's to assist at D-Cells. Here's the latest crucial Crucial covers of the brutal killing. 13 Crucial Minutes, a timeline of how University of Idaho murder unfold, everything we learned from the police, affidavit in the Idaho college murders, student slaughter, suspects, bizarre explanation for what he was in Idaho revealed. So let's go back to the woman, the professor. She said, I never saw him in person. I couldn't tell you how tall he was or how much he weighed. My only interaction with him was via email and Zoom. Obviously, you won't get a proper analyzation and you can't do a proper assessment of someone you haven't met, but doing Zoom calls for a year and him taking his degree, she must have noticed that there wasn't anything odd with him because Zoom call, obviously, you see the person well. Just say if there was an issue with them via the email, she could have seen how unprofessional he was because it's hard to control a character. But I know you can actually try and stay professional. She said, I didn't know about him, whether he was married, had a girlfriend, etc. Bulger told the Daily Mail. She continues to say, she continues to say, he seemed to be normal to me. But again, but then again, I only knew him from teaching him online. I didn't know anything personal about him. I believe he worked full time like most of our graduate students do, she added. Boga said she advised Koberg with these tests, the cease, which involved questioning people about their thoughts and feelings during the commission of a crime. I was one of the professors who helped Brian with his proposal on his graduate the CIS, his capstone project. He did put out a, a returnee questionnaire for the, for the CIS. It looks weird. I understand from the public view, but in criminology, it's normal, she told the Daily Mail. It's, it's a criminology theory called script theory. It is a normal theory on how and why criminals commit their crimes, etc., she said. After graduating from D cells last year, Koberger enrolled as a doctoral student, doctoral student at Washington State University in Pullman, Pullman, just 15 miles from Moscow. So basically, basically what I understand from you is she's talking about the questionary research that he did online, asking ex-cons criminals about how to commit a crime. How did they feel? Were they properly ready for the crime? What were the emotions like? Was it pre pan How did they leave the crime scene, etc.? We've heard of that one. And what is strange is this is the second professor. There's one clip I put in a couple of weeks ago with a female professor 
saying that she, it is completely normal in criminology to, uh, criminology to put out scripts theory. It's called a script theory about how criminals commit their crimes. So when we keep on judging Koberger, and many people have called him a psychopath and called him different kind of names, so putting out a theory like that, I find that to be outrageous. In criminology, allegedly it's normal. I don't know about in psychology and in mental health, because we deal more with... Our, my research is... In both my graduations was mostly about about mental health like how does counseling example how does counseling affect like is counseling good for criminals in prison does it help them to be more stable when they come out we would have counseling researches like combining counseling with psychology or combining how counseling could affect people with addictions if it is useful, beneficial, how counseling affects um, SAs, people with that kind of behavior, can they adapt normally in society? How long they should be counseled for people with addictions, like allegedly Brian was on serious addictions. Those are our kind of counseling researches that we do. But in criminology, I can understand that they have, that it could be normal for them. And she called that a script theory. At least I hope people understand that the research, counts, uh, research that Brian Koberger put out is not something to really take so much notice in analyzing that and trying to say that he got people from his research and such things. He did that in 2020. These crimes happened in 2022. I wouldn't look at it that much. After graduating from D cells last year, Koberger enrolled as a doctoral student at Washington State University in Pullman, just 15 miles from Moscow. Moscow. The 28-year-old was arrested on Friday in his family home in Pennsylvania and will soon be extradited to Idaho to face four counts of first-degree murder after he waived his right to extradition hearings. He is eager to be exonerated of these charges and looks forward to resolving this matter as promptly as possible. His public defender, Jason Labar, said that in a statement. Koberg has said from the start that he is eager to be exonerated and I believe, per se, that BF has exculpatory evidence that she has seen. Let's not forget she was in the Sigma Chi party with Eaton and Zana. What did she see? When did Eaton and Zana go home? Where was she when it happened? Did she witness the fight? She lives together with the victims. Did she see any of them coming to the property? Did she sense them leaving the property? Now that we know that she and Dylan were texting each other. When what, what's the obsession comes out with saying that the Sigma Chi boys and fraternities and sororities that she should not be in contact with, told her that BF saw someone in black clothing passing a window. I wouldn't take that to cons uh, consideration because let's not forget, the Sigma Chi boys was under the microscope themselves. So if you are under the microscope, obviously you will be pointing the FBI and the 
Mo Moscow Police Department to a totally different place. I wouldn't be surprised if they all started calling other fraternities and sororities, got together and decided to call and point it out on Brian Koberger. They know that Brian Koberger drives a white car. I've allegedly heard, I'm not sure, there's a lot of rumors about BF went to Washington Pullman University and she could have been a student or had some lessons with Brian Koberger. And if that is true, that changes the case too. Maybe that is what Brian means by BF could ex not exonerate me. I personally wonder what Ann Taylor knows so far and what she doesn't know. I hope she's investigated the grub truck video properly. The reason I say that is you clearly see Joe Vito watching some sim serious pictures. I do understand that I showed them some people could see it and some people couldn't. Let's look at it in the psychological way. Not every human being sees things in the same way. Not every human being has the same train of thoughts. If I see something, it doesn't necessarily mean that all my subscribers and viewers are going to agree with my theory. Because this is not a theory. This is, I hate to say, common sense. Because you clearly see that there's a lot going on in the grub truck video. You see, as soon as the crowd of like 20 people gathered around, jumping and yelling and saying Zana's name, at the same time, Mr. Joe Vito, with his Coca-Cola can, he keeps on giving signals with it, with his thumb and the Coca-Cola can behind his back. You can clearly see that he's watching something on his phone. He takes out his phone. You see a lot of pictures on his phone. If you zoom into it properly, you will see different figures. I can even see a figure standing and one on the floor. So people are different how they see it. I'm not a date. I'm not a tech and I'm not a professional with, with what's it called? With watching pictures and all that. But I have, I just do the normal. Zoom into the pictures because as a CBT therapist, I have skills in cognitive, that's the thoughts and the behavior. What I, I don't see right, I point out. I've been observing and watching the grub truck videos since this case has started. But like I said, I hopped over to Nicola Bully's case in Lancashire, London, UK. So I was too focused on that case and some of else's case. But I was in the beginning, I started with this case and I jumped back to this case in May. As soon as I came back to this case, I started observing the grub truck video and the Banfield video. But Saeed is watching crime pictures too. And I wonder, like one of my subscribers said in the comment channel, did they have a camera in the house that they all were viewing? I've thought about that several times from the beginning. There could have been cameras in the house and the only people who could tell us is BF, DM and the people who support in the house. But common sense would tell us if they had it, somebody took it out. Somebody uninstalled it before the police came. I personally do not believe that DM and BF are... What's it called? Victims. And I'll explain why. I know the worst thing you can hear is from a therapist's mouth saying that I don't believe they're witness, uh, victims. I do kind of. I pardon my language. I do believe they could have been victims. But I believe that they're surviving roommates. They're not the victim of a crime. The four people that are unlived are the victims. That's what I personally believe. And after hearing... Chief, the police chief, Fry, himself saying to Fox News, I did not say that they are 
witnesses. That was the word I was searching for, not victims. I, I really apologize. He said that they, I did not say that the roommates are, wit, uh, are witnesses. I just said they were there. So I find that to be really fishy because in the first two press, uh, press conferences, he clearly said that they were just there. They both were asleep in the first floor. How come after six weeks it becomes that the two surviving roommates, especially Dylan, DM, was actually on the second floor and she witnessed a man with a black mask, bushy eyebrows. There's so many other things that you see first. And psychologically, it's really known that the first thing you see of a person and you remember of a person is the eyes, not the eyebrows. Brian Koberger's eyebrows are not that bushy to be noticed. I would have noticed his eyes because his eyes look quite powerful. He has a certain stare in his eyes. So I'm surprised that she could see the bushy eyebrows and she, de she described him as 5'11". Let's not forget BF is 5'11". Is she trying to say that the person who committed these crimes are her height? That shows that it's not Brian Koberger. Brian Koberger is between 6'1". To six two. He's a very tall man. And I I believe personally that Brian Koberger has this strange walk. He walks more sideways. He puts his weight on one side. Pay attention to him in court. So if he walks that way and he doesn't know the house, I'm sure he has a heavy foot. He have he has a heavy set of foot. He would have been making more noises. He has snow vision. He wouldn't have been able to see properly. So I do not believe for a second what DM is saying. I believe that she saw somebody with bushy eyebrows. Yes, I agree. If she saw someone. But I do not believe it was BK. I believe she could have seen someone from the Sigma Chi and the other fraternities. And I believe she's too scared to talk. Because those are the people she grew up with. She knows there can be serious consequences. She wouldn't want to mess around with John Walter. Some people have told me in the comment channel, his name is not John, his name is Jack. No, my dears. His name is Jack John Walter Jr. So if I call him John or if I call him Jack, who cares? Right now I'm so upset in this case that names pronunciations, how I talk should be the least of your concerns. We are here to solve what really happened to these four students. We are here to get justice for them. We are not here to analyze me as a creator. I got my education, I got my degree, and I have plenty of other work to do. But I really care for these four victims, I really care for their family, and I want the correct justice to be done. I do care for the person who's accused because maybe chances are that he could be involved, chances are that it could be him, and there's more chances that he's not even involved. So I'm not going to sit here and trash Brian Christopher Koberger because I'm going to follow a PC and an affidavit that has been changed. I stick to the timelines of the beginning, three to four that is what I'm aiming at. Anything that happened after 2 a.m. is really crucial in this case. I don't think the crop truck video Twitch has been dealt with properly. I don't think the Banfield body cam has dealt with properly. These students are laughing with the undercover cops. That is the most unprofessional body cam I've ever seen in my life. These boys have their hands in their pocket. I hope Ann Taylor gets to see that. I wonder why she's smiling there. Maybe she knows it's not Brian. 
These were the students in the fraternities, the sororities that have something to do with it. I really believe that. That's the reason 4chan is one of my favorite articles. Y'all can say, oh, it's just, uh, it's just something that was said and it was an enormous person who wrote it and somebody who's enormous doesn't mean anything. Not everything should be discluded. The person made it clear to us. 4chan makes the most theory for me. The most facts I personally believe lies there. And to prove it, why else would the Sigma Chi fraternity be under a microscope? It's because whatever happened started with Eaton and Zana. I've always said the four were all targets. Let's not say that Zana and Eaton became targets because whoever did the crime upstairs had to pass downstairs and then he got caught by one of the students, one of the victims, Eaton and Zana, and that's how it all blew up. No! I refuse to believe that. There's pictures of floating for a long time of the couple. May God bless their souls. David Lodge and Barry, his targets from the start, was Maddie. May she rest in peace. Eaton and Zana may they rest in peace. What happened in that party? How did they walk home? Who followed them? The scream we heard at 2.55, stop it, stop. Who was it? Was that Maddie? Was that Kaylee? Was that Zana? Questions need to be asked. These students need to come clean. They know something. And if Brian Koberger was involved, they, he wasn't the only one who was involved. They were involved too. These are the things that are really upsetting me. Look at two of them on a mobile device. What are they watching? And now we have this one on his mobile device. These people are actually supposed to be in front of the police. The undercover cops are supposed to tell them, put your hands where I can see it. The young man in the middle has both his hands in his pocket. This one is busy watching pictures. You can see something black there and it looks like Maddie's jacket. What is this about? Why do these three boys look like they're full of anxiety? They're anxious. Why is this one in the corner with his mobile device wearing clothes that doesn't belong to him? It clearly looks like a female's clothes. What happened to his clothes? Now both of them on their phones and the third one is watching the phone with them. What is so important in those phones that these people are not even scared of the police to be watching? Why is this one wearing night goggles or sunglasses? Did he have a fight with Eaton? Was he punched badly? Why is he hiding his eyes? It's night. Why does this one on the corner, why is his pants all yellowish reddish? It looks like red liquid fell on him. Why does this one have a glove? Many people have argued with me and said it's a reflection, it's not a glove. It is a glove, you keep on seeing him wearing it. Sometimes he takes it out. I personally believe it's a glove, everyone sees things differently. Look at the glasses he's wearing. And why is the police letting them go one by one? Why doesn't he deal with all three of them and let them go at once? Now you can see that this guy on the left has something in his pocket, something black. Look at this young guy in the corner. Isn't that bushy eyebrows? Or am I imagining? He should be around 5'11", 6 foot. He's athletically built. Both of them are. 
DM, who did you exactly see? Or is this all made up? Is this a fake description? I can count for y'all how many people have bushy eyebrows. And I don't mean to say that to upset anyone or to make fun of anyone's eyebrows, but since Dylan has said bushy eyebrows, we need to figure this out. Where did these young men come from? Were they distracting the police or were the police distracting them so that the three or the four figures could run safely? Pay attention to this one. He's looking at the grass. He's been looking at it for a while. Is it because he can see the black jacket and he's wondering, is the police going to clock on? Look at his pants. What does he, ha what color is it on his knees? Because this is not the jeans color. This is clearly a wet pants. You can see the wetness. You can see, look at the color of his pants, please. He has on a pair of vans. This all can't just be coincidence. Not for me, at least. At least. Then you see the black truck that Dylan has taken pictures of. The massive black truck passing by. I wonder if it's the same truck Enam Harsh or Harsh was talking about. He said he saw a luxury black truck. Could that be possibly the truck who was driving it at 3 or 1 a.m.? Was that Dylan? Pay attention to where he's looking at, the one in the corner. He's now looking downstairs, he's looking at the bushes, kind of. And he keeps on doing that. Look at the jacket. Guys, please like, share and subscribe to JLR. He does a wonderful job. And JLR, this is for fair use purpose. I really needed to borrow your video cam because this is the one that is not blurry. You get to see their faces and what they're about. Pay attention to how they look at each other. What are these boys hiding? hiding? The jacket is there. You clearly see it. Did something happen to Maddie over there? Why is the jacket there? Could she have been attacked there? Took a warning. Imagine you're standing in front of an undercover police and you're busy on your phone. Which part of the world does that happen in? In the Western world? Even in the Eastern world, even in Asia, even in Africa. Police are police, that's the law. Nobody will be taking our phones and watching them and what is going on? What do these people know? What have they done to the four students, allegedly? Pay attention to this one's gloves. I don't know how people can say that's a reflection. Has the middle one been punched on his eyes? What is he hiding? Why is he wearing glasses? It's night. This is not eyeglasses to see what does he have in his pocket pay attention to the black truck why wasn't that truck investigated look at the timing it's exactly 3 a.m. on the 11th on the 13th of the 11th 2022 Was it DM or Quincy who was driving that truck? I heard that truck belongs to her stepmother, allegedly. Who was driving that truck? We don't know what was who was inside the truck or what was inside the truck. We know that DM wasn't in a frozen state of shock. It could have, she could have been frozen for a couple of minutes, but not more than that, because she was using her two hands to text BF.
Why were we told in the beginning that DM was in the first floor, sleeping? BF was sleeping. Six, seven weeks later, we were told, guess what? DM was in the second floor and she was a witness. She opened her door thrice. She heard a man saying, don't worry, I'm here to help you. She heard Kaylee playing with a dog. Could it have been Jack D allegedly taking his dog out? We don't know. How would I believe someone whose story doesn't sound right? Eight hours is not a joke. There's no explanation for not calling the police. Absolutely not. Why did these men not stop when the police told them to stop? And whoever says that no, this guy is not wearing a glove, please check again. It can't be a reflection all the time. He is wearing a glove. And you see him later on when they're standing across the road. He keeps on checking his pockets front, back, the pockets upstairs in his shirt. Is it because he remembered he forgot one, one glove or he lost one glove? Just a question. What is Mr. Saeed watching on his mobile device? Look at this. There do you, you see Saeed? You see his hand? His thumb doesn't look right. It looks injured. That's besides the point. Look at the picture underneath. It's somebody with a white ski mask. The two eyes are out. You can see the two eyes. Who's the person on the bed? Why do I see something red there? And I've shown you all properly so you can see it's not something I edited or something I made up. There's Mr. Saeed. Look at the timing. I've been explaining these clips over thousands of times. Many people do understand them, but I do see there are some people who say that they can't see clearly, but you need to zoom in. Zoom into every picture that he sees. Most of y'all know Chris McDonald and his beautiful wife, Karen. Chris is the one who found the glove outside the house, which is part of the evidence too one of the three unidentified male DNAs. Please like, share and subscribe in the interview room. Chris has done a wonderful job because he managed to find at 2.55 a.m. at the body cam of the alcohol miner. You can hear clearly a female yelling, stop it, stop. I wanted you all to see this. It was the first time on the timeline. What was the last, what time was the last call? You remember? 2.52. Two At 2.52. Okay, now. A.M. The 2.52 that he points out is when Kaylee and Maddie made the last call to Jack D, her former ex-boyfriend. So pay attention to this. All right, put your seatbelts on. And I'm going to play this a bunch of times. The driving license? I don't have it. With, no, uh, in general. Possible birthday? Yeah, I'll let you break that. Uh, you have driving license? I don't have it. With, no, uh, in general. Possible birthday? Yeah, I'll let you break that. Uh, you have driving license? I don't have it. With, no, uh, okay. Oops, where did it go? Yeah, I'll let you break that. Uh, yeah. Okay, at 0255. 16, you can hear, and, oh, this is another part. If you have headsets, put your headsets on or put your earbuds in, okay? At 
55 and 16 seconds. And I did a bunch of replays here. And this microphone is facing the house on that body camera. Okay? Tell me what you hear. No driver license? I don't have it. With, no, uh, in general. Also, birthday. Yeah, I left you. I've listened to this thing a thousand times. I'm going to submit to you. Somebody is saying, stop. Now, who that is, I have no idea. But as an investigator, if I was on this case, I would say, what am I hearing here? And isolate this audio. Okay? Very carefully. Listen to it again on replay. Uh, you had driving lessons? I don't have it. With, no, uh, in general. Also, birthday. Yeah, I left you made that. Uh, you had driving lessons? I don't have it. With, no, uh, in general. Also, birthday. Yeah, I left you made that. Uh, you had driving lessons? I don't have it. Okay, now, this one is the other officer who is writing a ticket, and it's a little bit further up at about 312.45, where... I saw some things where people were saying, yeah, there's somebody else yelling in that. I don't think so. I think it's the officer ripping his ticket and handing it to the individual. I blurred them out because they were all juveniles. Okay. So you're going to just hear a click, and that is not somebody in the background, okay? i.e. a person. It is a ticket book. Right there. camera on the other officers who's up by you know now facing towards the house again at also 0255 16 and this is what I think I hear yeah. okay. 19. 19. Yeah. Okay. that one is a little clearer stop it stop I'm going to play it again. Listen. 19. 19. Yep. There is 21. Karen, what do you think? You can clearly hear it. Um, you can definitely clearly hear, hear it from that officer's body cam. My question is, it's going to be an obvious question. Were there other students or young people in that field far away where it got picked up, right? I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking at this. Um, where else could that those screams have been? And I wonder actually if Stop It Stop was coming either from the victim's house, the female yelling, or could it have been coming from Linda Lane? Could it have been coming from outside Kings Road? And it's at 2.55 and a couple of seconds. 2.54... I believe of 2.52 was the last time the girls called Jack D. Did they get attacked right after that? Did something happen? We see Maddie's jacket there, allegedly. Yeah. 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 There is 21. Karen, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. There is. That one is a little clearer. Stop it, stop. I'm going to play it again. Listen. 19. So this is what I clearly think. Stop it, stop is a female yelling at 2.55 and 48 seconds. Then we have the black truck at 3.01 passing by. And we've seen Dylan taking pictures with those truck, with that truck, with the keys in her hand. What I think about the stop it stop is to start with, it couldn't be these three young gentlemen because obviously they're standing here in front of the police. But I would bet my life that the four figures or the five figures running were involved. Wherever they were running from. 
Please like, share and subscribe. Justice for these victims. Justice for the four precious victims. Nobody needs to lose their life in such a horrific manner. No one needs to lose their life to start with. If Brian Christopher Koberger is guilty, then he's guilty. But I can see that there are other people involved and they need to be exposed. We have this famous set, uh, sentence in UK and I think in the States too that they say, see something, say something. See something, say something. These boys knew what was going on. They didn't say something. They saw something. They're watching it on their phones. So is Saeed. So is Jovito in the grub truck. So is the group that is laughing, jumping and saying Zana. Why would they say Zana's name? I like what somebody said in the comments. They were watching the Vandals football. The Vandals, Vandals football was long done. Zana wasn't playing part of the football crew. So that wouldn't be very wise to say that. Please like, share and subscribe. Remember, this is for entertainment purpose only. These are not the facts. This is what I personally see that I'm trying to share with you all. Have a lovely Sunday. Bye.